One, why only 10? At the end of the introductory chapter of my book, I said this. The point of this exercise will be that by imagining all 10 dimensions, we will have imagined a fabric that can account for all aspects of reality. A tall order. Let's begin. How do we get to the 10th dimension from the 9th? As with every other dimension, we envision a point that encompasses the entire 9th dimension and call that a point in the next dimension up. Persons familiar with my animation know what I say next. If we're going to imagine the 10th dimension as continuing the cycle and being a line, then we're going to have to imagine a different point that we can draw that line to. But there's no place left to go. By the time we have imagined all possible timelines for all possible universes as being a single point in the tenth dimension, it appears that our journey is done. But is our journey really done? Far from it. The ramifications of this way of visualizing the dimensions are many indeed, and that's why I continue to find things to discuss about this project in my blog, and that's why I've published over 400 videos at my YouTube channel over the past five years since this project was launched. Some of the ideas that we haven't even touched on yet since we started this latest series are going to be the subject of this next group of videos, all of which come from a blog entry called Wrapping It Up in the Tenth Dimension. So here's part one, which we'll call, Why Only Ten? Some people suggest it's arbitrary to stop at ten dimensions. Did we run out of fingers so we decided that there couldn't be any more? Indeed, if you're not assigning any meaning to the individual dimensions, then the point line plane postulate allows you to keep adding as many dimensions as you want. People also ask, aren't there really eleven dimensions? In my book and my blog, I've insisted that 10 is really all you need to consider all aspects of reality, and that supporters of M-theory acknowledge that there are ways in which the 11 dimensions they're talking about are functionally equivalent to the 10 dimensions string theory is talking about. The graphic we're looking at here comes from New Scientist magazine, in a special feature they published in 2011 called Instant Expert Theory of Everything. Please do follow the link to read the whole article. Another way of showing this equivalence is to say that M-theory proposes 10 spatial dimensions plus time. With my project, I say that time isn't a dimension, it's a way of describing change from state to state within any dimension. So the tenth dimension with no time is the ultimate ensemble that Max Tegmark spoke of in his discussion of the different kinds of multiverse, or the timelessness that Gavin Gjorbrand spoke of in Everything Forever Learning to See Timelessness or the ultimate multiverse that Brian Greene refers to in the quote with which we started this entry. As I said in my original animation, if there were no superstrings vibrating in the tenth dimension, there would be no reality precipitated in the dimensions below. No time means no vibrations, no change. And because every one of the spatial dimensions we're looking at with this project are mutually perpendicular to the others, change in the tenth dimension automatically affects the entire system in various ways. Next time we'll look at part two of this discussion, Connecting Zero to Ten. <laughs>